Hey everybody, it's Larry with Hobby Progress, and today we're taking you into the tasting room pipe smoking edition. So today we're going to take it a little bit of a twist. I know I already took you through how to smoke a cigar a little bit, so today we're going to take you through how to smoke a pipe a little bit. So I'm here with Andrew from Peculiar Sawdust, and he's going to walk us through the basics on how to smoke a pipe without looking like an idiot. All right, so he's going to introduce you through a little bit of the paraphernalia and the hardware, a little bit of the tobacco, and then how to light it, how to smoke it, and then how to drink with it. So here we go. We'll turn it over to Andrew, and he's going to show us what to do. Thank you. As he said, I'm Andrew from uh, Peculiar Sawdust. I run a woodworking page, but I've been smoking a pipe for about 15 years, and I am by no means an expert. I would say that I am a student of the craft. I dabble. I do enjoy it. Uh, smoking a pipe is uh, it's, it's an art form. You can't just pick one up like you can a cigarette and just light it and go. You, there's a lot of stuff that you have to, to work at it. But once you get it down, it's a very rewarding experience. It's, it's much cheaper depending on what you're smoking and how much you spend on your pipe. I don't have any super expensive pipes, but you can spend upwards of $1,000 on one if you really wanted to. Every pipe that I'm going to show you today is under $40. Most of them under $20. So you can get into this super cheap. And once you get the basics down, really fun, really rewarding. I think you'll enjoy it. The downside is most places make you go outside. But smoking a pipe has an excellent room node. You've been around when I've smoked my pipe before and it always smells just fantastic for other people. That secondhand smoke that everybody hates, you don't get that with a pipe. In some places when you smoke a cigarette, everyone wants to make you go outside. Sometimes even when you smoke a cigar, the smell just doesn't work for everybody. But when you smoke a pipe, there's just something about it that makes you think of grandma's house. It makes you think grandpa smoked a pipe in the house, and it just smells like that. No one really complains about having that pipe smoke in the house. Um, so it's just really it's pleasant to have around. And there are certain blends that are more harsh and more mild than others. Uh, we have a couple that we're going to try here today of a... Uh, it's an anniversary, which is a, it's a very, uh, oh, Virginia, Connecticut, Cavendish. It's a uh, real mild. And then there's one called Black Magic. And this stuff is supposed to be, I have not smoked it yet, but I'm going to today. It's supposed to be very harsh, very powerful, very bold flavor. I'm really looking forward to trying this. So as the beers you've seen on Tasting Room before, the original anniversary, what you're going to see is going to be more of a yellow beer, more of a light flavored. So it's going to be crisp, it's going to be clean, it's going to be a good solid smoke. Where the Black Magic might be something more like a porter or a stout to where it's going to have a lot more flavor, but it might be spicy or it might be coffee or it might be earthy and have a, a darker flavor to it. No, that's very well put. It's uh and it's 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 what you like. You know, you like a mild, more relaxing flavor, you want a bold, hearty flavor, and you'll find that it pairs well with different drinks, different foods. So, and I like to keep something that's a little bit harsher if I'm in a harsh mood. Yeah. If you had a rough day, it's a great way to, you know, just relax, I think. Yeah, sometimes you just want to smoke something before a meal and then relax afterwards with a nice drink. Sometimes you want that smoke to finish the meal, to finish the evening. And then that's the last flavor you want before you go out. That's the same with the beers that I've been trying. Yeah, you've seen me try to pair them with smokes, to pair them with food. Um, different flavors go with different moods. Um, the two tobaccos that we have today are both uh, very generic. They're, one, the lighter is going to be more of a, a pre-dinner, a pre-smoke. It's, it's, it's more of a meal 
as a smoke, where the other one is going to be more of a dessert. It's going to be a very finished smoke because it's going to be stronger. It's going to overpower a meal. It's going to overpower another drink. Unless you go with some of the beers that I prefer, which you've seen me do, some of the high alcohol content, high bitter. Uh, I'm going with the um, uh, the pale ale from Boulevard today, whereas Andrew is going with a Bud Light. <laughs> so you'll be able to taste the difference between what we're smoking as to what we're drinking today. I'm not a fancy guy when it comes to beer. <laughs> like you said, this the darker, the more earthy, more heavy pipe smoke, don't smoke that before you go out to a good steak dinner. You're going to ruin your palate. You're not going to fully enjoy the steak. Just go with something light. And then at the end of the day, now that you've had those bold flavors of your steak and your potato or your fish or your spaghetti or whatever you enjoy, then finish with that right. because you're going to ruin your palate. So without further beating around the bush, let's get into it. Uh, if you want to flip the camera here, I'll show you what, uh, there we go. Like I said, this is my favorite. <clears throat> This is more of a classical style where the, the stem kind of comes down a little bit. But there's plenty of other options to choose from. This style here is what's called a church warden. A lot of folks call it a wizard pipe. It's something you'd see Gandalf smoke. Okay. Just a longer stem. It cools off. This will smoke a lot cooler than something with a shorter stem like this. This, uh, this style is called a nose warmer because it's so short. It'll more or less burn your nose. A lot of folks don't like these because this one does smoke very hot. Not that it gets hot in your hand, but because the stem is so short, it gets really warm. And you're going to get more powerful flavor and everything else. This one is, uh, they refer to these as a sporter because it's small. It lasts maybe 15 to 20 minutes. I mean, you could use something like this when everybody steps out to have a cigarette, you could take one of these out and it'll last you just about the same amount of time as it would for them to smoke a cigarette or two. You'll, it'll last a little bit longer, but, but you get to my point. And then there's something, you know, this is just a design choice with a straight uh, stem instead of the curved. And then there's this bad boy here that's got the super long stem. Again, nice, cool smoke. Uh, you're going to want a tool when you use, when you smoke your pipe. This is called a nail. As far as a pipe tool goes, it has a scraper to scrape the bottom of the bowl and a tamper. When you put in the pipe tobacco after you light it, it's going to want to pillow up or raise up out of the bowl. You use the tamper to tamp it back down. And that makes the fire burn down into the bowl rather than burn up. We all know that fire burns up, but you want the fire to go down so that it burns the, the tobacco as you're smoking it. <clears throat> There's a different variation on tools. These three different tools. This is what you'll see most commonly if you're out buying pipe smoking tools. It'll have a scraper or a spoon. It'll have a pin of some kind and then a tamper. The pin I find is not necessary. However, sometimes if you over tamp your bowl and you get the tobacco in there really tight, which I'm going to demonstrate in a minute, then you can use this to punch a, a breathing hole in your tobacco and it will open up a little bit and give you a little bit more flavor. I've never had that problem, but some people do. It's good to have on hand. I personally just don't use one. As far as fire goes, you are not going to want to use a Zippo lighter. They make butane inserts and they make a pipe lighting insert. These things in the standard fashion, they just, they're not going to do the job. Okay. Trying to get the fire down in there. It's not going to do the job. Don't use a Zippo. I highly recommend a cheap 250 Bic lighter. You can pick them up at any gas station, any grocery store, any, any place. These things are great. You can also use the cheaper variant. I don't even know what these are called. It's the cheapest Amazon big lighters variant that I can Basically find. Basically anything that makes fire, you're good. Uh, purists will tell you you want to use a wood match. Purists will tell you you want to use a wood match. 
but uh, it's not that important. I am going to try this black magic. That is move these bad boys over all right. Here away. And I'm going to show you how we're going to pack this in here real quick. I'm going to show you on the close up, and then we'll back back up. All right, and I am also going to try while he is doing that, and I will try to do it on the big screen and match him. I know a little bit about smoking a pipe, but uh, not much. So pay attention to the expert. We're going to do what I can do. Basically, you see me holding the, the bowl of the pipe over the bowl of tobacco. That way, anything that spills out, and it will, just drops right back in there. Wash your hands before you do this. Don't be a, don't be a dirt bag and grab somebody else's pipe tobacco with dirty hands. Okay? But I just fill it up to the top. You give it a nice light packing with your finger. And you don't want to... You don't want the tobacco leaning out the sides and everything. Just fill it right up to the top. Not over the top, just right up to the top. Nice gentle pack. Alright. And you want to make sure you have your pipe tool handy. When you light it, you're going to want it right after you give fire to your tool. Right Thank after you. you give fire to your pipe, you're going to want to, you're going to, want to use your pipe tool. Now, when I light it, I'm going to be puffing on it very slowly. So it's going to be breathe in and then breathe out. Breathe. Right, it's going to be a lot you're like You're not the... breathing in. You're just, you're, you're drawing on it. Okay? A Most like... folks don't actually inhale. Just draw on it. A lot like the technique I told you when we were talking about the cigars. You're going to want to use your tongue like a straw. And you're going to want to bring a suction in and bring it all into your mouth. Not into your lungs. Just... A light suction into your mouth to savor the flavor. All right. When you when you put fire to it, you're going to be lighting around the sides, not directly straight down into the bowl. Although when it gets a little further down, you're going to have to do that. But you're going to want to try and light it around the sides, which is the same technique that you're going to use when you're packing. So you light, oh, you light all the way around here. I'm going to lean forward so that hopefully this will get on camera. <laughs> now that I've got it lit, you see that it raised up a little bit. The, the tobacco raised up a little bit. Once it gets introduced to the heat, it tries to pillow. And then you use your tamper and you draw and you tamp it down around the side. And as you see there, it creates a nice little ash right around the top and you can see your fire going in there. Well, you can on this pipe. You can't on some of them, like the church wardens, because it's just blasted far away from your face. But that's fine. Like I said, they provide a much cooler smoke. They're more enjoyable for summer days because it's not as hot. Once you get it lit, Yes, I just breathed it in. I've been doing this for a long time. I do not recommend that for beginners. Once, uh, once you get it lit and you're smoking on it, I always recommend the rule of three. It's two puffs, and then a puff and hold, and then a release. So, Like that. Nice and gentle. And as you keep smoking, you're going to see that the power and the flavor starts to diminish. As it starts to diminish, that's when you're going to need to reach for your pipe tool and repack. And when you do that, you're going to again go around the side, all the way around the side, while you're puffing on it. So you're drawing, you're drawing, you're drawing while you're packing. Always draw while you're packing. Otherwise, it's just like tamping out a cigarette. You're just, you're going to lose your fire. 
don't be discouraged if it goes out on you. As I stated, I've been doing this for a long time. I still have them go out on me regularly. It's not uncommon and it's not shameful to have to add fire to it again. You, it's just one of those things. There is a lot of maintenance and a lot of work that goes into figuring out how to smoke a pipe consistently and regularly. And it, a lot of it's just by feel. Now remember in the cigar video when I showed you how to correct a sideways burn where you had one, saw, one side burning longer than the other. You've got to rotate your cigar. You've got to constantly maintain your burn. It's an art form that we perfect the more we smoke. It's not necessary to the way we smoke, but it makes the smoking experience more enjoyable. I completely agree. You, because when your cigar burns funny, it doesn't really change the flavor that much, but it feels weird. And you get a longer, a longer smoke if you can correct that. But with a pipe, it sometimes you'll get it burned down one side or burned down the other side and it won't burn the whole bowl. I do not recommend trying to fix that right away. Generally, you can fix that by packing the bowl. If you are done, if you're done smoking it, now these will generally smoke about 30 to 40 minutes. If you're done smoking it, you've smoked it for 10 minutes and you're just like, eh not having it today and you decide to set it down do not come back to that bowl in 30 minutes and just relight it that's going to be horrible it's just going to it's going to be bad don't do it dump it out take your pipe take your pipe and just hammer it while you're holding the bowl not the stem you're going to break it if you do that grab the bowl and you're going to hammer it either on the bottom of your foot or on a cork, or I use the heel of my hand. And you just go over the ashtray like this, and I hammer it on the heel of my hand. And as you do that, your tobacco is going to drop out into the bowl or into the ashtray or on the ground. That's how you get, that's how you empty out your bowl. When you use your scraper, you usually want to scrape your bowl just to get the, the what do they call it, the, the, the buildup in the bottom of your bowl or your pipe. You want to scrape that off before you smoke. Don't do it after you smoke. You never want to scrape a hot bowl because then you're losing all of that buildup down there. And that buildup is, it's, it's what provides a lot of flavor because if if you have an older pipe that you've smoked a couple dozen times, it's going to taste better than a brand new straight out of the box pipe. If you're into the things like uh, tea, per se, uh, a teapot that has a little bit of buildup on the kettle will give you a little bit more flavor. If you're a coffee aficionado, a little bit of buildup or brine on your coffee pot will add a little extra flavor to the coffee that you're tasting. Um, these are things that I'm not, uh, super into, but I know that, uh, a little bit of extra buildup is not going to be a problem. And same with your pipe, a little bit of buildup on the inside of the pipe is just a little added flavor to the smoke that you're going to have. I am a coffee drinker, and if you wash my coffee pot, we're going to have words. So, same thing goes for pipes. Don't, uh... A deep cleaning is not a bad thing. A little soap and water, a toothbrush, get most of it. You can use a pipe cleaner. Yes, just like the ones you used during art class in grade school. And you just run it down the stem. And that's pretty much it. You just take the pipe cleaner and you run it right down the stem. You're fine. Yep, we go ahead. You just take your pipe cleaner and you run it right down the stem. You can do this while you're smoking it if you want to. It might even help clear up the blockage. You just go all the way down, pull it all the way out, and I cleaned this before I started smoking so it's pretty clean. And then just set that down. And that'll clean up any blockages you have in the stem. 
Some pipes I've even seen has a filter that goes in here. Your stem will come out and there's a big hollow area and you can put, it looks like a cigarette filter. I'm not sure if there's a difference. It might just be a cigarette filter. But you get them on, you can get them online. You can get them from most tobacco shops. And it just goes in there, <clears throat> stick your stem back in, and you smoke. I don't use them. I think they're, I think they stink. It just, you're more prone to blockages. I don't use them. Uh, a lot of guys do. They swear by them. That's, that's not for me. But. So, like he was talking about earlier, my cigar, or, I mean, sorry, my pipe has gone out. I wasn't puffing on it diligently. I wasn't maintaining it diligently. So all I have done, if I have uh, listened to you correctly, is I have taken my tamp, and I have gone around the edges. You want to puff on it while you're tamping. Lightly. And I've gotten it down. Now I want to take my lighter, if I'm not mistaken, and I want to get a little bit of fire, and I want to go around the edges lightly while puffing on it. I get a nice little bit of smoke, get a little bit of flavor, and now that I've got it lit again, then I can go back to his three-step method. Remember, after you light, your tobacco will pillow up, so you want to tamp that back down. You want to want to tamp, I would say, a medium to a light tamp. You're not going to really want to put the muscle to it, because then you're just, tamp you're just tamping out your cigarette. You have fire. You ruined that. Was it burning? It was on fire. All right. So now that I've got my pipe relit, now I can just go back to the three-step method and continuously smoke this pipe. And it'll taste yeah, absolutely amazing. I have to admit, this pipe tobacco is a very mild, uh, great smoke. I went with the, the heavier, earthier stuff, and whew, this stuff is powerful. I'm digging it. I've always been a bit of a masochist when it comes to pipe tobacco, though. You'll I notice... I like heavier, earthier stuff. You'll notice in the cigar video, I smoked a pretty dark cigar. And that in the previous beer videos, I have liked high ABV, high flavor, very powerful beers. So, really, when you choose your tobacco, choose a flavor that suits your profile the higher flavor your beer your whiskey the higher flavor your tobacco should be you never want one to overpower the other my my pipe is vastly overpowering my beer these do not pair well together not recommended the pipe tobacco highly recommended but get a better brew Something I would recommend with the Black Magic would maybe be something like I have drank before. One of the Stouts, one of the Porters. Something you would want to recommend with maybe the this uh, anniversary edition that I am drinking, or I am smoking, would be something like maybe an IPA. Something like um, a um, lager, even, uh, would be very good with this. Uh, this is an everyday smoke. What he is smoking is this Black Magic. It's much darker. It's much spicier. It's uh, something that would be better done with a porter, with a stout. So you you do more beer. I, I'm, I'm a whiskey guy. I like whiskey. I like bourbon. This would pair excellently with a rye. Rye whiskey. It would pair very well with rye whiskey. But... That's coming from a guy who really loves rye whiskey. And again, if you like what we've done here, if you have a tobacco that you enjoy, that you would like us to smoke here, definitely shoot us an email at hobbyprogress at gmail.com. Shoot us a message at Hobby Progress on Facebook and let us know what you would like. If you've got a whiskey suggestion or a beer suggestion, hit us up on there too. 
and we'll try to pair up these tobaccos with your choice of beer or whiskey. If you want a little bit of extra there too, let us know. Uh, like and subscribe here on Facebook. Go and find Andrew at uh, Peculiar Sawdust if you like woodworking products. He makes some shot glasses that are pretty stinking cool over on there. Andy, if you want to pimp your stuff, uh, go ahead and let us know what you do there. Uh, basically, it's just, it's not unlike Larry's uh, channel here. It's my hobby of woodworking. I, I release, I try to do a video every now and then of what I'm doing. I do some tool reviews. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be putting out a couple of safety videos because uh, I've had a couple of mishaps in the shop and I don't want you guys to have those either. Don't want to be, uh, you know, missing any fingers or anything like that. <laughs> None of that. I still don't have feeling at the end of these two fingers. Ask me how that happened. Trust your safety guards, people. Also, don't try to repair your own tools. A router got me with about 110. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I absorbed some current that day. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Yeah. If you like what you see here, like and subscribe. Come and find us on Facebook. And uh, thank you for watching.